Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life. It's May 23rd, 2022. I'm Derek Shore. Hi, Derek. Hello, everyone. I'm Courtney Savala. It's oh. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. It feels like a Monday. <laughs> Good Monday. We're going to have a lot of fun on today's show. Of course, you probably know TikTok is filled with all kinds of funky videos, but we found one Houston man who broke the mold. He has become famous for his gentle voice, gardening skills, and life lessons. It's almost, Courtney, like free therapy. We're gonna meet him in just a few minutes. I can't wait for that. And we're helping you plan your Memorial Day weekend. We've got seven inexpensive, even free things to do in Houston for the whole family. We like the sound of that. Also, get ready to tumble. Joe Sam is getting a lesson from so local cheerleaders out of Netflix's hit show cheer it is coming to town what it takes to make the squad we'll find out ahead and before we get into all of that let's take a look at our forecast i know things are a little bit changing we got some rain coming in yeah and frank yesterday rocking and rolling in the morning i mean so, something we haven't heard in a long time yeah called thunder yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the cooler temp though i know it felt pretty good and actually today we've warmed back up with the sunshine we have moderate air quality because of that so if you have any upper respiratory problems please be careful that saharan dust that i promised it's actually here. It's light, but it is here. Temperatures 80, 83, 86 in Sugarland. So the sun has really come out. Going to do a little dog walk. 84. What a cute little pup pup. That's Ellie Mae. 84, 82 at 6, 80 at 7. You can see on Exact Track radar a few showers to the south of San Antonio. I'll widen that out a little bit. And this is all active ahead of this cold front that's going to be moving our way. We'll talk more about that coming up. But you can see we're going to see some strong storms out there today. That's where the severe weather threat is. Not really for us, but starts to edge in here both Tuesday and then again Wednesday. So a lot to go over coming up in weather, but keep those umbrellas handy because the rain is not done with us yet. Tomorrow morning may be a real big commuter mess. And according to my hair, Frank, the rain's coming. It's very puffy today. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I, believe your, I believe your hair over my computers any day. How's, it's your, like... how's your lower back and your knees? <laughs> <laughs> We're feeling it for sure. Hey, Frank, before we let you go, we noticed a little something on your Instagram uh, yesterday. You were oh, hanging you out with that? some. Yeah, yeah, we sure uh, did. <laughs> wait, and for the viewers at home who don't know who Nick Lachey is, tell us all about him. Well, you know, he was on what, 98 Degrees, that boy band years ago. Yep. Then he, I remember him being famous when he was married to Jessica Simpson, and they yes. had that show because she was so darling, and everybody enjoyed watching them and their antics. Of course, that didn't work out for them. Now he's married to that beautiful woman, Vanessa uh, Lachey, and they have a show called Love is Blind, where these couples meet each other through like a, a wall they can't see each other yeah. but they can mm -hmm. talk and so if they can talk it through they might actually get married and I looked it up it looked like about four of the couples over the last three years are still together interesting wow. like, I know they start out with 50 anyway they're in Houston uh, so they were at lunch there at uh, Eloise Nichols and I talked to them for a little bit they, they were actually filming the next day uh, love is blind here in Houston so I don't know if the next season is going to be here or okay. exactly. I didn't really pry into that, but that, but that's what they were doing here because they had a five in the morning Sunday shoot that oh. they had to go. So they're like, Those are rough. this brunch we're having, that's it for the day. We're going to go home and go to bed. Well, they were at a good spot for sure. They Frank. sure were. Frank Billingsley, our entertainment correspondent. Thank you so much for that update. <laughs> My pleasure. I'll have an update at 3.30. <laughs> we appreciate it. Well, as we said it today, definitely feels like a Monday, but man, coming off the heels for me anyway and my family, this was a big week weekend for us. Y'all are going to be so proud of me. I kept it together. You didn't cry? I, I didn't say I didn't cry. It just oh. wasn't ugly tears. <laughs> Connor graduated eighth grade. Officially now I have a high schooler. Um, it was such a beautiful ceremony at St. Teresa and um, it was lovely. My mom was able to make it in and Aunt Rob and so we had a lovely time on Friday. I, I, I got a little weepy, you know, because just all the things as you would um, our firstborn and so I love this family picture. That was actually for Saturday, but um, oh, nice. Saturday was um, the Houston Chamber Choir, which I think we're going to get to. We have a split screen here. Okay, so this is my family, of course, my mom, Aunt Rob, and then my chosen sister, best Lori. friend Lori, and yeah, her and husband, John. John. They joined us for a beautiful lunch at local table uh, to help celebrate Connor. And it's just a little throwback here. Oh, I think wow. Connor was... Um, three, two or three years old. Maybe he was 18 months. I, I think can't he remember. looks very young. Yeah. 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 I mean, just we kind of tried to recreate that. Photo. And now he's taller than you. <laughs> I know. 
I know, but it was so sweet and he's real excited. He's, he, summer's officially begun for him. And, um, you know, AJ was real mad when he had to go to school this morning because he still doesn't get out until the 7th. So thought that was a little unfair. Um, but it was great timing because on Saturday, I had the chance to share the stage, of course, with the Houston Chamber Choir. Uh, there's Bob Simpson and the rest of the choir uh, there. This was their season finale and this was their Once Upon a Time. I was the narrator for the Snow White story. You look great. Story. Thank you. I was so nervous, um, but it was so much fun. The, the choir welcomed me with open arms. We had several rehearsals and it was such an incredible experience. And if you can next season, please check out Houston Chamber Choir. They are a talented group of singers and uh, 25 of them, of course, founded and led by uh, Bob and his wife. And um, they were so lovely. It is really fantastic. And um, it, it, the, the backdrop was amazing, but it was just really, really incredible to be part of. Well, you look beautiful and it's perfect timing that your mom and Aunt Rob are in town and congrats to Connor for, for graduating. Eighth grade graduation wasn't a thing where I came from. Yeah. So it's nice to be here in Texas and have you know, as many milestones as we can celebrate along the way, the better. Right, and when we're together and able to kind of lock arms and hug and enjoy the moment, definitely. It was so wonderful. By the way, if you weren't at the concert on Saturday, there's a virtual release. So check that out and you can see the whole performance online, the Houston, Houston Chamber Choir. So I will do that. Give them a follow. I will do that because unfortunately I was not able to attend. We missed you on Friday. Catherine Whaley was here. Yeah. And then we ended up on Friday going to the Montrose Center Gala. This is an so annual beautiful. event. And I think we have some video to show from it. It's a fantastic organization because they help LGBTQ plus uh, young people who are more likely to become homeless or have issues because right. oftentimes, sadly, still the case, they get uh, kicked out of their homes. There was a little theme. I was gonna going to say, I see on, Gilligan. And you can see Lucy. Oh, <laughs> not just one Gilligan, there was a whole table oh, full of no, Gilligan. I love it. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, it was really, really a lovely evening. That's our friend Christy. She's a realtor in town, uh, friends with one of our coworkers, Brittany Burt. So it's fun to see Christy. She did all her glam before the big night and then you know walking home I think it was good luck uh, we took the train part of the way home I showed you the video a roach landed on me just like it happened to Brandon flying roaches it's are a thing flying roach season and we're Houston. just gonna say it's good luck we're gonna say it's good luck mm -hmm. much like when a bird deposits something on your shoulder right or good in luck. your mouth as happened to my mom once she was looking up we were in <laughs> DC right in her mouth it happened. That hole in one? I don't it know. Happened. What do we call that? Yeah, hole in one. <laughs> hole in something. And then uh, Saturday, we went to the Astros game with our friends Brad and Brennan. That was a great time. It was our first game of the season. Yeah. So it was nice to be there. They played the Rangers. They beat him. It was a good Love time. That. We had some photos in there somewhere, but they're not popping up. But you know what? A great game. There they are. There Look it this is. this handsome bunch right here. There we are. I love that. And uh, great game. I'm glad that we uh, we beat them. Too. Yeah. Good game. <laughs> yeah. Good game. I'm always glad when the Astros win. Uh, by the way, uh, tonight I'm um, helping uh, Crime Stoppers and moderating a talk with Rania Mancarios. Of course, she's Crime Stopper CEO, but also a busy mom and author. We've spoken about her book that she's written, uh, The Online World and What You Think You Know and What You Don't. Oh, yeah. This this is going to be a Facebook Live, just an organic conversation with Rania tonight, 5 to 6, on Crime Stoppers page. So please join us. We're taking questions as well. Okay, that's very, very nice. So people can tune in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you know when you're going out to dinner or lunch or something and you think, where should I go? You go and look, maybe Yelp, very popular place to yeah. look for. Okay, they've released their 100 places to eat in Texas. It came out today. Houston did not make the top 10, so I'm not really sure how that happened. How is that possible? So Yelp, I think it's probably the first time ever. Do they take just the ratings all together in Texas? Is that yes, how they do it? Yes, yeah, the amount okay. of, and there's another little formula uh, exactly how they do that. But we've got the top uh, five here. Um, you can see them here. There's one, the first one came in at Pepper Route, uh, Paper Route Bakery in Austin, mm. um, Katz's Barbecue in Santa Fe. We've got Cool Cow Cream, uh, Creamery in Kima. Oh, that's cool. And then one of our favorites, yes. the Gypsy Poet. Gypsy Poet. Came in at 14. And, you know, they've been climbing the list. I've got a chance to meet them. And this is all pizza. It is fantastic. Get there and check them out. But you can also check out um, the full list there on Yelp. So Gypsy Poet ended up being the most popular Yelp destination in Houston. Houston then, huh? Yeah. Fantastic. Number 14. Fantastic. I know. Now I, I want pizza. It. Same. I know.
and after cookies. the show. Okay. <laughs> and cookies. After the show. Still to come, cookie decorating is so popular on Instagram right now, but if you've ever tried decorating like me and you've thrown away dozens and dozens <laughs> of pounds of uh, dough, don't worry about it. They, you know, may not be picture perfect. Today, we're getting the secret tips from the experts. And next, there are thousands of influencers on TikTok. We found a special one right here in Houston. Next, a Houston man who cuts through all that hype by gardening. Don't go away. Houston Life will be right back. Today's H-Town sit-down guest, Marcus Bridgewater. If you follow him online, you know him as Garden Marcus. With more than 680,000 followers on TikTok and more than 8.2 million likes, this Houston social media star has also appeared in Vogue and the New York Times. And now Marcus Bridgewater has a brand new book, How to Grow. Today, he's stopping by Houston Life. <laughs> Okay, folks, I have made my way outside, and Marcus, I am so glad to know you. Oh, right, I've been you. spending my morning on TikTok. So, <laughs> guys, if you do one thing today, go on Instagram, go on TikTok, just look for Garden Marcus. What's so cool about what you're doing is it's not just about gardening. It seems like it's really about self-help. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's all about uh, wellness. Trying to share kindness, patience, positivity, encourage people to be conscious of the seeds that they plant every day, the choices they make every day. The seeds they plant. The, seed, the choices you make today are the seeds planted in the forest of our future. So the more conscious we are of the seeds we plant today, the more likely we are to live in a future we all really want to. It's so philosophical. So one of the <laughs> videos I watched this morning, Marcus uses this analogy with a potato plant that's not growing very well because there's this elephant plant that's sort of obstructing the light. Mm -hmm. And once you moved the potato plant, it started thriving. Uh -huh. And you use that as a lesson for life. You know, if you're not thriving, maybe you need to move to a new location, whether that's physically or figuratively. Exactly, right? yes. Uh, relocation is something that can be profoundly helpful to your well-being and sometimes it might just be you need to take a moment and go to a park. Just have a, a, a moment of uh, displacement in your life and you'll see incredible amounts of change. How did all of this begin for you? Because clearly you are a gardening expert, Marcus. <laughs> but when you started posting these videos online, did you really set out to blow up as big as you've become? Or was this more of a hobby for you? Well, you know, my company, Choice Forward, uh, we are focused on empowering people to make better choices, focus on their mind, their body, their spirit, mental health, physical fitness, spiritual awareness. We created that company in 2018. And then we were encouraged to put um, Garden Marcus on the internet to share the philosophy of Choice Forward in 2019. And it took off in ways we couldn't imagine. And uh, we've been thankful ever since. But no, it was not planned. It was incredibly organic. And it just so happened that we were sharing kindness, patience, and positivity at a time where people really, really needed it. Yeah, during the pandemic. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about the book in just a moment. Okay. Give us an example of some of the responses, because <laughs> I've read through a lot of the comments, <laughs> and uh, I know you just mentioned you're surprised by how many people have been engaging, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of people are saying you're changing their lives. Yeah, it's, uh, it has been incredibly humbling. Uh, it's been a blessing of the highest caliber. We get DMs and emails and messages um, all day about how much we've changed people's actual lives and how much the philosophy and the thoughts have really given them uh, access to tools that they needed that now they're using to build themselves and to better their community. Okay, let's talk about the book, How to Grow, Nurture Your Garden, Nurture Yourself. What do we find in the book? Well, in the book, we have five sections, an introduction, and we go over mental health, physical fitness, and spiritual awareness with a conclusion. Uh, and we're basically giving you um, a lens into bettering yourself using the garden. And these are some really epic concepts, but because nature is so consistent, it makes the concepts easy to digest. 
Well, listen, it's super cool, and you deserve all the credit and attention you're getting. Look at this uh, endorsement right there on the top. Garden Marcus is a balm for the pandemic-induced chaos happening in the world. That's by Vogue magazine. You've been featured in the New York Times. I'm sure this is just just the very beginning. Marcus, it's so great to meet you. Right back at you. Thank Come you so much. Come back and see us at Houston Life anytime. And in the meantime, <laughs> if you would like to learn more about Marcus or to connect with him, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now let's send things over to Courtney. All right, Derek, thanks so much. I just found my next book. When we come back, have a year-end school party or need a perfect teacher gift? We're going to show you how to decorate Pinterest, Instagram-worthy cookies. Look at those. But first, stay in on track with your health. The important screenings women should not be skipping out on. That and so much more when Houston Life returns. Well, you know, when it comes to your health, it's easy to put things off, especially if we're not even feeling sick. But you should still feel the need to take care of yourself. Self-care, right? Here with some important screenings that should be on every woman's to-do list. Dr. Jennifer Uku with Memorial Hermann Medical Group. It's great to see you, Dr. Uku. Thank you so much for having me. Let's first start off with this notion of, okay, I'm feeling great, probably don't need a physical, everything's great, because I think as busy moms, busy women, we tend to just say, well, I'm fine, I don't need to get screened. Right, we hear that a lot from a lot of our patients. I would say um, having women come in for their annual preventative screenings, we're able to pick up on early breast cancers, cervical cancers through the pap smears. So we're able to pick up on a lot of things that you know you otherwise cannot feel. And we're gonna talk about those um, specific screenings here in just a little bit, but we should also mention too, doctor, that it's important to get those annual physicals, the blood work and sort of the things that maybe we don't think are necessary if we're feeling great. Correct, we're easily able to pick up on declining kidney function, changes in your liver, high cholesterol, and many other things through talking with you and seeing you once a year at least. And absolutely, I think it's important too to kind of get that baseline. You're feeling great year to year, and then maybe there's a, a slight shift. Uh, the physicians know where to look. Um, let's talk about the importance of screenings as you just started a little bit ago, and breast care and mammograms. Of course, uh, women, average risk, let's talk about that, and ages for these types of exams. Yeah, so um, under the age of 30, we do, we do start pap smears at the age of 21, and we do those every three to five years. Also above the age of 30, we do pap smear and it's paired with the HPV exam. Also, we do breast exams paired with those pap smears every three to five years. And then we start mammograms at age of 40. Unless you have a family history of breast cancer, then we can start that a bit earlier, 10 years from the diagnosis of the family member and keep that conversation going with your physician as well. Let's talk about colon cancer screenings. The ages have changed a little bit uh, here in the last couple of years, but a lot of people think, oh my word, I don't wanna take this test, it's too much. But let's talk about the age uh, that we should start screening for this. And really it's just the prep that is kind of the problem. You know, it just takes a little bit of an issue, but once you're through with that, the rest is easy. Correct. We're now starting at 45 instead of 50. But I would say we've we've gone we've gone much better with the prep. It's much better to tolerate. You're not carrying this big gallon of you know liquid to chug the night before, so it is a much easier process. And we have more options other than the colonoscopy. Absolutely. And again, talk to your doctor. Uh, Dr. Uku, I do think that this is such an important topic for many of us, many women. We're busy. We're worried about the family. Sometimes our own health care gets kind of pushed down, and especially during the lockdown, the pandemic, maybe we put those screenings off, but now is the time to make those appointments. Correct. We would be more than happy to take care of you and talk about the things that affect your daily life so we can take a proactive approach to getting ahead of anything that could be affecting you in the future. Dr. Jennifer Uku, primary care physician with Memorial Hermann. Thank you so much for the conversation today. Thank you so much, Courtney. Absolutely. For more information, you can visit memorialhermann.org slash MHMG. Now we're going to send things over to Derek, who's back on the couch. Hi, Derek. I'm back, Courtney. <laughs> Thank you for a very important conversation. So in Texas, few things are bigger than football and cheerleading. And in case you hadn't heard, there's a mega popular docuseries on Netflix called Cheer. It follows the lives of cheerleaders at Navarro College and their rivals in Corsicana as they prepare for the 
college national cheer competition. Well, guess what, people? Now that show is going on the road. Joe Sam chatted with the show's head coach, and he joins us now from the South Union neighborhood on the southeast side with a local cheer group. They sound like they're pretty pumped up about this tour, Joe. <laughs> They are pumped up, you guys. Just finished hearing them cheering. They are cheering and they are excited about the competition that's going to be happening, that tour that's going to be coming here to Sugar Land from Netflix's Cheer with the Navarro Cheerleaders. It is absolutely amazing. Cheer squads all over Houston are excited about it. And I got that chance to speak with Monica Aldama. She is incredible as she tells me how they plan to put you guys on for a show when they come here to Sugar Land. It is a pleasure being joined right now with Monica Aldama from the Emmy Award winning docu-series on Netflix, Cheer. I'm telling you, I'm a big fan, Monica. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. You joined this series and this docu-series to talk about the athleticism and the, the actual sport of cheering. Honestly, we were just kind of hoping that people in the cheer community would watch it. And I really just wanted to showcase their, their athleticism. And, you know, I thought it was a great recruiting opportunity. We had zero idea what was to come. <laughs> this season two is packed with so much entertainment. You have such huge personalities on your team at Navarro. And that's what I think was the key ingredient to making this such a successful show. Obviously I've had one, like meeting Oprah. I mean, wow, what a what an honor. <laughs> Some wonderful experiences. I've met so many incredible people. You have fans all over and so many people here in Houston are excited to see you. Yes, so we are so excited about this opportunity because what it does is it gives us the ability to do what we love, what we're so passionate about without that component of competition. And so we're gonna take you on a journey of all aspects of cheerleading without that box that's holding us in. But just to say like, I'm the best. <laughs> and I want y'all to know it too. Navarro is definitely proving that. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's been such an honor. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Again, you guys, that tour is going to be happening June 10th. It's going to be coming to the Sugar Land Smart Financial Center, and you can already see these cheerleaders are super excited about it. They are all ready to go and check out that show. And when we come back, they're going to be showing me some tricks all about cheerleading. We're going to be learning some cartwheels. We're going to be learning some of these cheers here with the Peck Elementary Cheer Squad. It is going to be so fun. For right now, we're going to send things back to you guys as I go and get ready to cheer on. Yes, stiff arms. Yes, absolutely, Joe. <laughs> They are some cutie patooties behind you. They look great. Go team. We'll see you in just a bit, Joe. Thanks. Still ahead, seven free and inexpensive family outings for a fun Memorial Day weekend. Get your notepad out, take some notes, and Lauren Kelly is in the kitchen showing us how easy it is to decorate cookies really like a pro. She's with a pro with step-by-step -step how to's. That's when Houston Life returns. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Monday, just about 3.30. It feels like a Friday all of a sudden. Oh, you're feeling good now. I'm feeling great. <laughs> okay, why don't we check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what is coming up on the news at 4 o'clock, including our brand new entertainment correspondent, Frank Billingsley. <laughs> at the ready. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh, he I does know. it all. He does it all. Yeah, I'm just a magnet for celebrities. They just they can't stay away. <laughs> I was like, man, we ran into. I get nervous about around celebrities. Do you? You do? You, get, you you get nervous around yourself. Well, I mean, how, I don't want to interrupt that? them. Stop. <laughs> but I want to like, you know, I don't want to go and be a bother, but I want to meet them. Yeah. Yeah. So I get a little nervous, like, hey, <laughs> hey. Wow. I don't believe it. I don't it, believe Frank it either, Lane. Frank. That doesn't I'm surprised calculate. he wasn't like, is that Frank Billingsley? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he was. I mean, was. that's probably he probably felt the same way. If that happened, I would never tell. <laughs> you wait. I love it. Okay, so Frank, we obviously have a lot to talk about this week. I mean, I mean, we already got a little rumble yesterday, yeah. so, and this front came through. It feels a whole lot better out there. Temperatures in the 80s. It's still warm. Don't get me wrong. 86 in Sugarland right now. 83 at Hobby. 82 down in Galveston. But the humidity cut a little bit. We're not seeing those 90s like we were. So that's a little bit of a relief as we go into the week with more rain chances coming. But not today. We've got 84 for a little evening exercise. 5 o'clock. 82 at 6 and 80 at 7. This
this is new on the board. The green up here, these are flood uh, advisories that we're going to watch for. And you can see this is going to be for a flood watch until Wednesday at 7, basically for the counties just to our north. And then if you go off to the northeast toward Louisiana, this is until Thursday at 7. So th this is not our area, but whenever you see a flood watch that close, you want to make sure you pay particular attention. It's all about this front that's going to be heading our way. And you can see severe weather threat out there today for storms and heavy rain, gusty winds, even some small hail and lightning with that. The severe threat continues to move toward Houston on Tuesday, but especially moves through here, it looks like, on Wednesday. So here's a wide look. I'll go close up on this coming up, but you can see this is the future cast. As we go into tonight, but we're in pretty good shape. This is two in the morning. The showers start to show up for the morning commute. It looks like it's going to be fairly messy from 7 a.m. until about noon tomorrow. Then a bit of a break. That front is what we'll brace ourselves for on Wednesday morning. This is midnight Tuesday into Wednesday. Continue to see those rains coming through. That's 7 a.m. on Wednesday, and then we finally dry out on Thursday. But it's going to be a very good chance of rain. 70% Tuesday, 90% Wednesday, and some severe weather that will come with that. We'll talk more about it at 4 o'clock. Christine? All right, lots of details there, Frank. We'll see you at 4 o'clock. Thank you. And here's some of the other stories we're covering for you this afternoon as well. More than 100 arrests this weekend at the popular Jeep weekend in Galveston. What we are learning about some of those arrests and how first responders became overwhelmed by the crowds. Plus, you may have heard about the virus known as monkeypox recently. Coming up at 4, we will talk to a Houston doctor about this virus, what it is, how it spreads, and why cases around the world are growing. And you have got to see this video, guys. A man and trapped on a rocky cliff 500 feet above the water. Once rescuers found him with the help of a helicopter, the challenge was how to rescue him, how he almost made things worse during the rescue. So we'll have all the details for you guys at 4 o'clock. Oh, I know. Wow. I know. Oh my. Word. Word. <laughs> now you know why I almost didn't make it to work today. Oh, was that you? I, How did you even shave in enough time? It is a story you will not believe. Here's the thing. Why are we on that to begin with? Like why oh, is on it, the cliff? Yes. Why? Why did that? Well, happen? maybe he slipped. <laughs> oh, come on. I, listen. Or maybe he wanted to get closer to nature. You know the view. Yeah. I, 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 Maybe he's no. trying to get a good Just selfie. Just get a little closer. Just a little I closer. literally, that, like, my, I, I'm sweating. Yeah. It wow. happens all the time where people fall off cliffs. I mean, it's happened at the Grand Canyon or on, on bluffs yes. overlooking the ocean yeah. where people go to take a photo and they lose their footing. I yeah. don't know what the case is with that man, but I guess we'll find out at 4 o'clock. Yes. I mean, well. I'm guessing he was, like, jumping, like he was di cliff diving or something because he didn't, I mean, he just had a swimsuit on. It wasn't like he was... He, Climbing, he, he wasn't prepared. He didn't have shoes on. Yeah, he didn't jump far enough, apparently, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm glad he's okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Wow, that video. Okay, Where's guys. Encyclopedia Brown when you need him? <laughs> Seriously. He'd know what, he would know exactly what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> or, or we could just continue making up stories and narrating <laughs> what may or may not have happened. That's always fun. Well, I, I, heard, I heard it was an audition for maybe one of the shows on NBA. No, I don't know. No. Oh, I was Stop. like, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, Courtney, it's a joke. <laughs> right, right into that one. I did too. I believe no, I'm sorry. It's a okay. great headline. We're going to tune in for the real story at 4 o'clock, yes. okay? Love all, all right. the details. Okay, we'll see you then. <laughs> Bye. Again, glad he's okay. That is pretty no heart-stopping video. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we're going to take a turn now. Have you ever started your own business, maybe had a passion to work for yourself? Well, after graduating from San Jacinto College, Sid decided to open up her own gourmet cookie shop. And this afternoon, Lauren Kelly is in the kitchen with the woman behind Sweets by Sid. Well, one of my absolute favorite things to do in Houston is highlight successful Houstonians. And this right here is Sydney Kale. She is a graduate of San Jacinto College. And this is so cool, Sydney. You went to San Jack, you studied their culinary pastry program, yeah. and now you have opened your own business, Sweets by Sid. Yes. This is so <laughs> exciting. Why don't you tell us how long you've been decorating cookies for? I've been decorating cookies for about seven, eight years now. I've been full time for about four years. Um, so it's been a journey um, and it's been super rewarding. It's been awesome. Have you always known that you've loved dealing with cookies, baking cookies and decorating them? I've always known that I wanted to do something with my hands and create something like beautiful that people can enjoy. Um, and my grandmother had a restaurant growing up and my family's always really bonded around making food together. So once I kind of decided that I could merge art and like food together, I was like, oh, this is it. Like, this and is and what now it. for the holidays, everyone's like, oh, Sydney's gonna handle the dessert. 
right? <laughs> oh no, every time. They're like, we don't even need to think about that. Like, so he's got it. let me <laughs> ask you this. Do you only do cookies? Is that your specialty? That is my specialty. I specialize in decorated shortbread cookies. Okay. Um, then I also do some gourmet cookies like s'mores, um, funfetti, red velvet, um, all of those so kind of things. So delicious. Too. It's so good for yeah. summertime too. Yes. We're going to be decorating some cookies today and yeah. I love that you've already shown us <laughs> what we're going to try to accomplish here. You've got the flamingos yes. right here. Don't mind. My hands are clean. Uh, the flamingos. Uh -huh. You've got the pineapple. This is so cute. Yes. And of course, the sunglasses. Can't go on. Now, I, I love to try to think that I'm artistic when it comes to decorating cookies, but yeah. clearly in the past, I have had no success. So <laughs> you're going to give us some tips on decorating Great. these moist cookies today, okay? Where Sounds are we going to start? Um, we can start. We're going to start with uh, an outline layer, and then once that dries, we'll be able to flood them and fill them in. The outline layer kind okay. of acts as a boundary so that icing doesn't overflow. So, the we materials start, we have. Yes, we have our outline and flood icing, and then we have a little bit of detail icing here that's thick, and we'll use that for like the unicorn hair. Okay. You want to do your outline first, okay. and then once that sets, you'll do your flood. Let's so, give this a go. Yes. <laughs> okay, so tip when you're holding your bag, I like to have one hand pinching at the top so nothing comes out of the top. Okay. And then all of my pressure is coming from the bottom of the bag instead okay. of squeezing from the top. It's easier okay. on your hands, and you have more control being closer to the bottom. Okay, so the outline first. Yeah, so you just kind of start in the corner or wherever you feel most comfortable. Okay. And then... And just kind of squeeze? And you just kind of squeeze. Okay, I don't have any... Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is a thin, a thinner one. It is. You want your outline to be kind of thin so that when you go to fill in, you're not seeing too much of it. Okay. And then you just kind of connect your points. Okay. All right. Um, it, yes. <laughs> Cute. Perfect. Ish. It's good enough, right? Okay. It'll do the job. Okay, perfect. So I've got the outline. Now we're going to go back. Now the term flood means essentially just filling it in, right? Yes, it does. But And then with this icing, I use a different kind of icing okay. than cookie ears typically use okay. to flood. Cookie ears will typically use royal icing, which I use to detail. But to flood, I actually use um, like a donut icing. Okay. So it's more of like a glaze base, um, mm -hmm. and it doesn't dry as hard. It's more, There's more flavor in it. All right, City Work. Where can people find your website online if they're looking for your cookies? Yes, my website is www.sweetspicesid.com. Okay, it's S Y D. S Y D. Okay. And then I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well as Sweet Spice Sid. Okay, HoustonLife.tv. I'm gonna put a direct link. Let's just pretend that this was mine already. I finished it. It looks so good, <laughs> it's everybody. So good. It's Sydney, great. thank you so much and congratulations on your business. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, so cute. It is an absolute art form. And these, I love your unicorn. I know, Courtney and I made these. We did in two seconds. <laughs> no, actually, we did not make these. But look how cute they are. They're adorable. I know, it's such an art form. I'm glad she showed us and walked us through it. Or we could just order from her, right? Uh, yeah, I hope her career takes off like gangbusters. Absolutely. They really are cute. It's so cute. And I love the pineapple one, too. If you're considering a new career or starting your own business, feel free to connect with San Jack College. We do have a link on our website. HoustonLife.tv or go directly to them at sanjack.edu. And summer classes begin on June 6th. Fall classes start August 22nd. Fall classes already? We're thinking about that? We are. It's a thing. Right around the corner. Right around the corner and never too late to try something new. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. All right, still to come, some last minute places you can go with the family this Memorial Day weekend. Make a plan. FYI, they're all inexpensive. Yep, but first, let's check back in with Joe Sam, who's in a pretty cheerful mood today. See what I did there, Joe? <laughs> I definitely am, you guys. When we come back, we're going to be learning some moves, some cheer moves from the Peck Elementary Cheer Squad. They're going to be teaching me all about the art of cheering when we come back here on Houston Life. So don't go anywhere. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Welcome back here to Houston Life. You know, we have been talking all about Netflix's cheer coming to Sugarland. It's super excited. So, you know, I have to come out here and learn some moves on my own with the Peck Elementary Cheer Squad. We're here with Coach Armstrong, who is going to show me a couple of things and talk to us a little bit more about the cheer squad here. Tell us the age ranges of these beautiful ladies that we have behind us. And so our age ranges ranges from three all the way up into 11. Wow, absolutely. And then what's so special and unique about the Peck Cheer Squad here? So what is so unique? unique and special about them is just the community that we're in. Um, 
the community embraces us and we embrace the community as well. And we just like to lift up everybody and encourage everybody and pump them up. That's right. We definitely want to pump them up. And speaking of pumping up, we want to learn a few things. So tell us our ladies here their names and then you're going to be doing what for us? A cartwheel, right? All right. What's her name? Okay. So right here we have Z uh, Raya and then we have Denari. All right. So show me how to do the cartwheel. I'm going to try and follow after you. Okay. All right. Give it to us. Okay. <laughs> All right, so all right, let me see if I can do that after you. I might have some stuff fall out, but we'll see. Oh, oh, okay. all right, not too bad, right? All right, let me try one more time. There we go, all right, did right, huh? <laughs> and then you're gonna show me a cheer, right? So give us that cheer really quick. Pump it up, ready, begin. Pump, pump, pump it up. Pump that cardinal spirit up. Keep, keep, keep it up. Keep that cardinal spirit up. All right, one more time for me. <laughs> Cardinal no spirit up. Keep, keep, keep it up. Keep that cardinal spirit up. All right, I, I kind of got it down, right? Okay, but I know I need a lot more practice. So, Coach Armstrong, I'm going to let the ladies take it away for us and give us their full cheer. You guys, they're absolutely amazing. They're pumped up about Netflix cheer coming here to Sugarland, as well as so many other cheer squads here in Houston. But we're going to see what the Peck Elementary Cheer Squad has for us as we get ready to send it back. You guys, let's get it. We are ready. Oh, look at that in the back. Y'all better come with the moves. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're going to get ready to send things back to you guys as our beautiful cheerleaders here at Tech Elementary continue to just cheer us on. You guys, you are awesome. <laughs> Great job, ladies. Very nice. Pump that cardinal spirit up. It's a good day out there. They Thanks are so, much, so cute. I have so many great memories from cheer, and those girls work so hard. It's awesome. Looking good. Thanks, Joe. All right, coming up, Memorial Day weekend fun on a budget. The top seven free and cheap activities to keep the family entertained without breaking the bank. Don't go away. Houston Life will be back after this. For many folks, of course, Memorial Day weekend is, you know, the unofficial start of summer and a great time to get out and explore the city. And if you're looking for fun activities to do with your family, Houston has plenty of options that are not only on the cheap, but some of them are also free. Here with some of her favorites, Amanda Serena, contributor at Mommy Nearest. It's great to see you. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy almost summer. Almost summer. We're in the final stretch now. Just a couple more weeks of school. I so know. A couple more <laughs> weeks. And you know what? Memorial Day weekend is always a, one of those plans that you want to find something. I know it's hot. We want to find something for everyone. So the whole family um, can really take enjoyment here. And we're going to start with one which I absolutely love. And it's a movie night. Yes. Yeah, so Levy Park has some free movie nights. One is this coming Friday at 830. They're showing Sing 2, but they have a number planned through the summer too. So if you can't make it this weekend, but they have food trucks and different things for you. Grab a picnic, grab a blanket and go watch Sing 2 at Levy Park. And that is happening um, on May 27th, right? Snacks and beverages, um, including beer and wine will be available to purchase there on site. Exactly. So if you don't want to pack your own lunch or your own dinner, you don't have to just buy it there. And you know what? If you get there a little early, I mean, there's tons of stuff to do. You just saw the playground plus the splash pad. Splash pad if you need to cool off. Swimsuits are encouraged. <laughs> exactly. And get those kids nice and sweaty and tired and then go home and all is taken care of. Lots of great fun. Okay, let's talk about Miller Outdoor Theater, another great spot, of course, here in town. And an iconic spot here yeah. in Houston, too. So they are back with their programming as well, which we're so happy to see. So on Friday and Saturday night at 830, they're doing a free Motown music show, the Funky Good Time Show. And that's another one to bring a picnic and a blanket and hang out on the lawn. That is so great. And I forget that, you know, it's 
you said it and I said, yes, that's right. You can bring a picnic, do whatever you want, and it's such a great enjoyment for everybody. Yes, and it's right there and there's so many other parks and things to walk around to if you need to. And music, the Motown, Motown music, it's something that everyone can enjoy. You get up and kind of feel the groove a little bit. Um, okay, moving on over to Discovery Green. This is also one of our favorite spots. It's just, I'm so happy to see so much of this programming coming back again. So Discovery Green has a bunch of family programming, but specifically on Saturday, there's an international festival that's supposedly one of the biggest international festivals promoting peace and love and friendship in the country. I love that. What better place to do that right here in Houston? Of course, KPRC is a proud sponsor of this event um, and it can't wait for that. You can check out the Kingdom of Dreams mural and the Walk of the New Labyrinth, which is on display. This is uh, by Houston artist Reginald C. Adams, a fantastic local artist as well. And there's going to be some food trucks here too. So if you happen to miss the festival on Saturday, Go to Discovery Green on Monday. There's some food trucks oh, there good. for that. So there's two opportunities really this weekend at Discovery Green. Okay, fantastic. Um, okay, so that was the first three. Let's move over to number four, which is my new favorite spot in Houston. I love Post HTX. So we just went for the first time on a date night and went, we need to bring our kids back here. Yeah. It was super fun. There's great architecture, great food, casual atmosphere. But then on the weekends, the Skylon has a DJ. So you can go up there and it's kind of a wedding vibe, all ages up there, lots of fun music, check out the skyline, enjoy a treat. And that's so cool because of course that is the rooftop greenery that you're seeing there. And by chance, if you're a passenger on 45 and driving by at night, it's so fantastic because you can see it. It's really great. Now this is Saturdays. They're open from 11 to 10, Sundays 11 to 9. And there's also, I love this, two words, free parking. Yes, so under 75 minutes, you can park for free. So if you want to time it just right to get up there, see yeah. the sunset, check out some music, maybe have a beverage, see, and you can do that all for free. Yeah, and you or can enter for free too, yeah. and then just your food and different things that you right. want to buy there at the food court, um, you have to pay for clearly. Uh, but a great spot there. Okay, moving on to number five, this is Memorial Day celebration at, of course, Buffalo Soldier Museum. So the Buffalo Soldier Museum not only celebrates the heritage of the Buffalo Soldiers, but also African American military history overall. So especially if you want to focus on the meaning for our three day weekend, they have an event on Monday that is free, but you do have to RS SVP, so go to okay. their website to make sure you snag a ticket, but they're going to have some live tours. They're going to have some troops available. They're also going to have some veteran owned businesses outside that you can purchase some food and items from if you're interested. I love that. What a way to support that as well. And again, that's Monday, May 30th from 12 to 4. Uh, it is free, but limited tickets. So and make sure you go ahead and RSVP. Okay, number six. I haven't been here in a minute, but it is so much fun. Lucky Land. Lucky Land is another one we just recently recently visited and this one is not a free one but it is definitely in your budget because okay. kids aged 3 to 12 are $5 and $10 for adults so you can take the whole family for you know not a whole bunch of money and there's so many photo opportunities there's tons of photo it's cultural um, China there's going to be repl replicas of the terracotta army there's all these photo picture opportunities it was just such a blast koi fish Rickshaws. It, it's all awesome and uh, Instagram worthy photos as we're seeing here as well. Definitely get out to Lucky Land if you can make it there quickly. Um, and then number seven, our last stop that your recommendation is of course the Orange Show uh, in Smither Park. Yeah, anything fun and funky, yeah. I'm all about it. And the Orange Show is definitely fun <laughs> and funky. So it was put together from found objects of a Houston postman um, from the 50s to the late 70s. And there's mazes and a stage and a wishing well and a bunch of things. And right, and that is five dollars if you're 13 up. But other than that, if you're a kid, you're free. And next door is Smither Park, which is another great place for a picnic and a whole bunch of artwork there and mosaics, things of fun. Absolutely iconic and picture worthy as well. Seven ideas. I love that. Not all of them are going to break the bank, but they're definitely going to provide the fun. Amanda Serena, great to see you. Thank you so Thanks much. for doing all the work for us today. Oh, of course. <laughs> we appreciate it. I'm going to hang on to these cards. These are great ideas. To connect with Amanda and Mommy Nearest, head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv. We're going to have all the information over there for you. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a special trip to one of our favorite museums in town. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, we're going live from the Houston Museum of Natural Science 
Do you and your children like dinosaurs, butterflies? We have got all kinds of cool stuff coming An up. exclusive look behind the scenes at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. I can't wait for this. This is tomorrow on Houston Life. The whole show, we're going to be there. It is great for all ages, and that is one of my favorite museums in town. Those exhibits are larger than life. We're even going to show you the mummies I, and go into the fossil lab, too. It's going to be so fantastic. And what I think is when you go to this museum, and we've been going since, you know, before we had kids, um, but each time you go, I, I feel like I see something different. Yeah and experience it, so I cannot wait. Yeah, an endless amount of fun to be had at the Museum of Natural Science. So we'll join you there live tomorrow. Maybe a few surprises up our sleeves too. Oh, always. Always, I cannot always. wait, I cannot wait. Well, thanks so much for joining us on Houston Life on this Monday. Hard to believe it's already over.